Ever see those sick thumbnails for Sonic videos on YouTube that have custom posed models from the games and wonder how they do it? Well, here's how they do it. First, you're going to want to install Blender. Yeah, I'm sure you can figure this part out on your own. There's other tutorials on it and you're an adult. Most of you anyways. Next, follow the link in the description to Styx on Twitter. They've ripped all the models from Sonic Superstars and they're in handy dandy dot blend format. So all you have to do is download the ones you want and double click the file to open the project with Blender. Next, you actually have to pose the model how you want it. This is the draw the rest of the owl part of the tutorial because there's no shortcut to learning the ins and outs of posing. But we're going to give it a shot. So here are the basics. Click in your mouse wheel to rotate your perspective around and hold shift while you do it to move around. You can also scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. There's four different view modes ranging from wireframe up to basically a preview of your render. I recommend the third one because that's going to show you about what your render is going to look like without taxing the shit out of your graphics card. Select jumtorg.001 and go into pose mode to see and edit the bones of the model, which are really more like the joints. The easiest way to pose that I found is to select the joint you want to edit, then drag out this transform box if it isn't there for you, and use this box to edit the different parameters. I'd hold shift as you click and drag these sliders, otherwise you don't have nearly enough control. If you ever want to start over, just right click a value and press V and it will reset back to zero. If you want to make a render that includes more than one character at once, go up to file, append, click the dot blend file of the character you want, go to collections and import the collection. Your character will probably come in all yucky because all of their different mouths and eyelids will be visible at once. Open up their jumped org and click the eyeballs and cameras next to everything that shouldn't be visible. Go ahead and delete the camera object as well since we'll only need one. You'll have to get a feel for what bones you want to move to get the poses you want, but I'll give you a hint. You're usually going to be rotating, not transforming. If you want a more visual way of rotating the joints, hover over the left side of the screen and select the rotation tool and now you have little wheels to rotate joints in place. Be sure to look at reference images for poses you want to imitate. You can even import them straight into Blender by going to object mode, selecting add reference image and adding the image you want. Then you can scale it down and move it wherever you want. When you get to hands, you'll be shocked just how hard it is to get the fingers to do what you want them to do. To make things easier, go up to the top and change global transform to local. This will make it so that your joints rotate more relative to each other. Once you've got your characters posed, you've got to position the camera. Camera. Click this little camera button and your viewport will show you what the camera sees. Click the camera in the little layers panel and we can start transforming it. You can also edit its properties like its focal length in the properties tab below. A higher focal length is going to be more zoomed in and look more cinematic and flat, while a low focal length is going to zoom out and be more dynamic and wide. Go ahead and click the fourth shading setting to preview what your render will look like with lighting. Now you'd normally have to light the characters yourself, but there's a light map baked into the dot blend projects we were provided that looks pretty good already. So we'll We'll move on to the render settings. Come over to this window where we messed with the camera and click the icon that looks like a globe. Here you can leave the color space linear if you want to do color correction after, but if we set it to sRGB, that means less work for us. So I like it. You can also use this slider to set the brightness of the lighting map they included with the model pack. Now click this printer and we can set our output resolution. For YouTube thumbnails, I like 1440p, so I have some wiggle room with the scaling. Finally, click the camera to edit your final render settings. Under sampling, you can leave the viewport settings alone and change the sample rate of the render. The higher the number, the higher the quality, but also the longer the render time, and you'll get diminishing returns past about 1024, so that's what I go with. You can also add more light pads if you want, which is really just kind of a placebo thing in my opinion, but this is what I like to set them to. Once you're happy with your settings, just go up to render and click render image. Give it time to process, and once you get your final result, click image, save as, and save it wherever you want. Be sure to keep it a PNG with ARGB color to keep your transparent background. Now all you have to do is add the finishing touches in Photoshop or your design software of choice, and you're done a high quality custom model thumbnail. And if you wanna see what makes a dope ass Sonic video, check out one of the videos you see on screen now. I'm sure you'll enjoy it.